So the script changed a little bit. So it changed a lot, actually. And there was a long period of time between my first session that I ever had uh, until I got the call for the second one. Um, and then that script was different. And every script that we got w w was changed. And I think at one point there was a different writer brought on. Um, there were two main writers, Josh Cooley and uh, a lady named Meg Lafarve, or I think her name was last name, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so one time I'd get the script and it would have a lot of heart to it. Then the next time I got this, uh, the script and it would more action. Right. Um, so I really didn't have a complete feel for the, the entire movie until I actually saw it in the theater, you know, that first time. Isn't and that, that was just like, it was mind-boggling awesome, yeah. you know. There's, like you say, there's so much going on in levels and the, the hilarity of it as well as the emotional... Well, I, what, what I said, I think, in, in, when I wrote about it, I said, you know, you can watch this just as an action adventure. Uh -huh. and I think kids will go. I think that's know, what they're going. To, yeah, they're going to clue in on the colors and. The, yeah, and but I think parents will find something else in it. Right. I think slightly older kids, you know, for teenagers, fourteen, fifteen, will get something else out of it again. Right. Uh, certainly, twelve-year-old girls, I think, will look at this right. and go, "I completely understand this. Right, this right. movie makes this, perfect this, sense." They're talking about me, you know. <laughs> right. Did you have a, a, a rough, you know, eleven, twelve, thirteen-year-old? I, I, you know, it would be a more interesting story if I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but oddly enough, no. I was I was a really happy kid, um, and I attribute that to my parents. Um, we I have a brother, and my my mom and dad and I. Um, we were not wealthy by any way, shape, or form. My dad generally worked two jobs. We lived in three rooms. We all slept in the same bedroom uh, till I was about. Uh, in high school actually so I mean I the fact that we lived in close quarters but um, my life was they made sure that my brother and I that our lives were happy and good and you know um, I guess it's called good parenting I guess so. yeah. <laughs> and I think we're lacking that in today's world I'm sorry to say I think uh, um, there's so much going on in, in the family life now that the actual sit down, we had to sit down at five o'clock and eat dinner every mm -hmm. night. And together. That's, yeah. And we did that together, you know. Um, we did a lot of things together in the backyard playing or cutting the grass or whatever it was. And um, so hopefully this movie will bring families together and they can talk about things, you know. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think certainly, as I said, I think that the movie works on so many different kinds of levels, mm -hmm. and it's the kind of movie that, when inevitably it comes out on DVD or Blu-ray, uh, and parents have to watch it over and over again because right, kids right, like right. to watch things right. over and over again, that I think this movie will hold up to, you know, more viewings. You'll be able to watch this and, movie over yeah. and over again. And it'll, you'll have a different meaning at different times mm -hmm. to you, you know, and hopefully it will live long, long after we're gone, you know. So I kind of took away from it when I walked out of the theater. I was thinking, you know, the, the, the message is for me anyway, what I took away is that uh, into every life a little rain must fall. Mm -hmm. it, it's okay oh, to like feel that. sad yeah, sometimes. Yeah. You know, that you have to you have to balance out the sad. You have to have one to have the other. Yeah. If you're continuously happy all the time, uh, that's... There have to be peaks and valleys, right. I think, right? Otherwise, so, it gets boring. It would be. It would yeah. do. And, and and how will you know if you're happy if you're never sad? I right, guess. Exactly, that's, that's right. It. If you have it all, then well, how do you know the other? Well, what do you think the the message is for you? Uh, for me, as I, because I, I've watched it uh, three times now, so every time I do, you know, get something yeah. different from it. And I find myself editing my emotions more. I find myself... Um, you know, saying, well, why am I reacting that way? Or just more aware of my emotions and how I, um, you know, like I had an experience the other day where somebody didn't show up when they were supposed to and it was gonna, I was going to be late and it got all, you know, and I thought, why am I getting all upset about this? It's no big, you know, it, it will all be fine. Yeah. 
And so I, I did think about anger and disgust. <laughs> I was like giving it names like that. And also uh, it made me think about memories and core memories. And uh, now I have a label for that that I didn't actually have a label for before. Um, and um, I don't know, I, that it's okay to, the, the quick version is like you said, it's okay to be sad, it's okay to have these, to know that, every, like you say, every, in every a little yeah. rain may fall, must fall. Well, and I think too, one of the things that is so interesting about the movie because you don't often in kids' movies get this kind of level of depth. Right. But the idea that a happy memory can turn sad with and time be okay. and be okay. So you may uh, have a happy memory of. You know, playing hockey with your friends, but when your friends are gone, that becomes it's a sad, sad memory, right? Yeah, then and that it is changes. A, yeah. That is a level of, of introspection that you don't see in kids' films. No, very no, often. Huh. and uh, I think that makes it interesting for the adults too sure. because they can actually dissect that. Yeah, you were a casting associate. I was. Mm -hmm. So, uh, using that part of your brain, why <laughs> do you why do you think that you were cast? as the role of, of sadness, or in the role of sadness? Um, I, I know the reason I was cast uh, was because Jonas Rivera mm -hmm. um, was watching Bad Teacher late one night <laughs> and saw the scene with uh, when Cameron and I were eating lunch and he heard my voice and he picked up the phone and called Pete and said, I think I found our sadness. So I guess it was the, timid the timidity it, Within that scene and my the timbre of my voice, that right. they, you know, they just struck. A that's chord the nice. That's the nice part about working for Pixar is when you get that call, they pretty much already know what they're wanting. It, it, it's an interesting career that you've had, because to say the least. Well, to say weird? the least, I was doing some reading, and you were a dancer. I was. A, I started out as a professional dancer. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, but not like a burlesque dancer, but not a a show dancer. A show yeah. dancer. Right. And is that like Las Vegas show? Like like not like the no stripping, but the things? the plumes and the feathers and the g strings and the and all of that. Um, and I also was a in two ballet companies. Yeah. I was in a jazz company. I t studied modern at a university in St. Louis. So. Um, that was my passion. And so you always dancing. wanted to be a performer. I always wanted to be a dancer. A dancer, but a dancer. not necessarily an actor. Uh, not necessarily an actor. And then um, when we came to L.A. to revamp the show, I had an injury. And I, I knew logically it was time for me to make a switch in my career because I was getting older. Um, and... It was make it was hard to make that decision to change the career, and as a dancer, you generally, when you're at a certain age, there's not a lot to fall back on. Um, so, I I just did what I had to do to pay my bills. You know, like work. I was a receptionist. I worked at a movie theater. I I go to my nine to five job and then I change my clothes, get into my movie, movie theater gig and work in the box office till 11 o'clock at night. And I did that for like three years. Um, what was then, the weirdest job that you had? Can you think of? Uh, weirdest? I, before I even got to LA, I worked uh, at, for JC Penney's yeah. and I worked in the um, warehouse tagging the merchandise. I don't even think they do it anymore, but um, I used to stand there and just tag thousands of fishing lures, our, our bowling balls, <laughs> our <laughs> lamp, our uh, like roller shades, yeah, which yeah. are heavy as <laughs> to to lift around. So yeah, um, the people were great to work with, right. but the merchandise was was a little challenging. Would you just time. let your mind? Oh, I, Wander. Well, actually, oddly enough, you asked that question. I can remember standing there, like just tagging and thinking about life and wondering what it is that we all have in common uh, because we're not all given the same opportunity and we don't all even start at the same with the same, you know, some people's health is impaired when they're born and they don't even have that to start with. And, uh, and then others are charmed with, with, 
maybe intelligence or looks or whatever they're given. And I'm thinking, what? There has to be something that we're all, there's a commonality here or something. What is it, you know? And I figured out that it's the ability to love. We all, in some form or another, want to be loved and to love. And so that was my big revelation, at, you know, my, my, my uh, <laughs> light bulb moment. And also to make sure you're standing on a, a, if you're standing on a concrete floor, make sure you have some kind of, some kind of uh, foam underneath yeah, you. Because like otherwise you pay for it yeah. later, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I love your ring too. What is that? Thank, well, it's it's uh, because I watch things for a living. Uh, that's it an was, eyeball. It was made there to you real go. Glass nice, on. yeah. Um, do you miss the office? I do. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, at first when it went off, we went off like in March, uh, and if we generally would go on hiatus around that time, uh, it was depending upon like Steve Carell's. Um, movie schedules when we first started so and, and it just felt like we were going on hiatus and then when July and August came around and we didn't go back I really did have a sense of loss and going okay now what do I do yeah. you know but fortunately I'd already started this movie so I did have some right I had something to look forward to well know? it's funny because uh, that's another show the 20 years from now will be on and it will have a life of its own. It's a show, like, there, there's a handful of them. You know what's going, you know, what's interesting for me with The Office is that there's a whole new audience coming mm -hmm. up to me, a whole new age bracket starting around 14 or 16, yeah. and they're all streaming it. Right. They're not watching it on network anymore yeah, yeah. or cable. They're they're streaming it and they say, "Oh, my boyfriend and I stream it, or my mother and I." We and uh, so there's another whole layer of people watching it. So hopefully, it will can have life for. I, it feels to me like know. a show that will. Yeah, 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 something to be proud of. It's a it, it's a, an achievement, a show that you know. Steve Carell, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but Steve Carell, when we were actually filming the pilot, he said to us one day at lunch, he said, "You know." This could possibly be the best TV show we ever work on, right. and that was when we were, we hadn't even completed the pilot yet. He had a, he had an inkling from just the approach that it was, yeah. and and the leadership at that time. So um, yeah, you know, I'm very happy to be associated with yeah with both of these projects. Yeah. It's, 